So I have my little shot vac uh, that I've been using for years, but now with the dust collection system, um, I, I use that for most tasks. I had st actually stopped using the shop vac. I had it connected to a little theme baffle and it was okay. It, it di really didn't do a good job. So I kind of stopped using it. The other problem I have with it is it just, you turn it on and you get clouds of dust just coming out of it. So this thing is just, is full of little fine dust that you know it's been working on for the years. So I, I thought I'd just kind of take it apart and, and clean it out. So the screws are held in with a Torx, a T20. Uh, I got one out, so I'm gonna carry on and take out the other three. I'm trying to figure out what this little gizmo here is. It's a little captured cap that I, I gather when the uh, blower turns on, it gets sucked up and blocks off that inlet, or I'm not sure, gotta figure out what that's for. Any comments? Uh, any ideas, please leave something in the comments on what that's for. I may discover it as I go along, but your help may be needed. Okay. Yeah, you can see just, uh, that's pretty dusty. And that's even worse. So I'm going to start by blowing that out. I'm going to go outside, use my air compressor, and just kind of blow that off. Then I can see there are some more screws here that hold the motor on. I'm going to take that off and just kind of clean in underneath there. So back in a second. All right, blew that off. That, that looks a little bit better. You can actually see it has color. Clean off the top. So I was blowing air through here just while I had the blower out and uh, just dust is coming out everywhere. So I'm kind of curious to see what's happening underneath this cover. So we'll take these screws out. Again, the same Torx uh, T20. And by the way, it is unplugged. All right, uh, surprisingly clean in there. Maybe that's because I was blowing it out. Um, but I'll take this out again. We'll clean that off, blow that out. And it looks like that's just the, uh, just the impeller underneath there. A little bit of dust in here. So I'm gonna go blow that out as well. Blow that out. And then, uh, yeah, I think I'll just leave that as is. I could take this out. No, you know what, I'm gonna go a little bit farther. I'm gonna take out some more screws and just see if there's anything underneath here that needs attention. If I've gone this far, might as well go the whole way, right? And, you know, taking it apart. What could possibly go wrong? Oh yeah, good idea to take it apart. So lots of crap in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> so who knows how much harder this motor has been having to work because of that. All right, we'll go blow out all this stuff. Be right back. All righty, I'm uh, back from blowing this motor out and Boy, yeah, there's a ton of dust in here. So as I was blowing this out, um, dust everywhere. I was blowing air through here and dust was coming out here. Uh, and I do know that when I spin this, there's a little bit of a uh, moaning noise. There we are. So the, there's some uh, bushings in here that are gonna need some lubrication. So I'm gonna do that too. So I'm going to take it apart even further yet. So I've removed these two screws and I can see now that the whole piece comes apart like so. So some bushings in here that's going to require some lubrication and there'll be a bushing down there I'm sure that requires lubrication. 
And I'll probably have to take off that. We'll take off this um, nut here and see if we can get the motor to slide right out and then give it a full service. Probably blow out everything out in here too because I'm sure there's dust all over the windings in there. Okay, be back in just a sec. Okay, so that's just a uh, half inch nut. Came off very easily, just kind of grasping this and uh, just a little bit of tension on the nut, so it comes off very easily. Just make sure to put it back on that way. Of course, that's not too difficult to figure out because it really can't go much else. Uh, and I see we've got two Phillips screws here, probably holding the whole motor housing in, so we'll take them out. There we are. So a little bit of dust in here yet, so I'm going to go blow that out a little bit more. We now have our motor free, such as it is, so I'll probably blow that out. And we'll make sure we get some lubrication on this bushing at the top, and we'll try to get to the bushing here on the bottom. Well, in fact, there's a bushing comes right out. That's good. We can get... Uh, a little more lubrication in there. In fact, what I'll probably do is soak it a little bit with WD-40 just to kind of clear it out. And then we'll put some machine oil in. Okay, I'll be back after I've blown this part out. All right, I'm just going to put a little bit of WD-40 in here and down here. Now, I know WD-40 is not a lubricant, per se, and uh, not really what you want to use for a motor. But this is pretty stiff at the moment. You can, I can just feel it, its stiffness and then... Uh, that's making the motor work a lot harder than it needs to. So I just want to free it up and then once it's free we'll put in the uh, uh, some better lubricant right away instantly instantly that feels better. So I'm just going to put some down at this end. Yeah, the motor almost freewheels at this point. From being stiff to being able to spin, that's remarkable. Okay, so I'm just going to spin this around. Oops, sorry, I'm just going to spin this around for a little bit um, until I'm kind of happy that it's moving freely. And then I'll put in some machine oil. I have some very fine machine oil here that I'll be using. And we'll just get that lubed up and put it all back together. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, I uh, lubricated the uh, motor here. I slipped it back in its case. We put a couple drops of uh, machine oil here, a couple drops of machine oil down here. And we're ready to put this uh, impeller back on. I might be missing a little bushing that was in there. Uh oh. Hunt for the bushing is on. Be back in a minute. Yep, found it. It had uh, dropped off when I was blowing it out. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of oil in here too. That's better. Much better. So theoretically, I could plug that in and turn it on and see that spin up. Let's do it. First, I'm going to clear some stuff out of the way here. Okay, clearly there's some safety feature at play here. 
or I've done something wrong, which is entirely plausible. So that leads me to think I should take it apart again and maybe I damaged one of the wires when I was either blowing it or assembling it or reassembling. All right, back in a minute. Okay, just took it apart, reassembled it. I think I must have had a, a wire pinched uh, because now when I turn it on, we're running. Of course, it might be that it just needs to be, it can't be vertical. Hmm, never thought of that. I had something wrong. So anyway, it works, it runs, it starts up. I don't get that groaning noise. So let's put it all back together. So this piece just uh, slips over here. And it is unplugged, by the way. The exhaust vent goes here. And the cover. Oops, <laughs> that's a mistake. Yeah, I was supposed to put uh, that on before this, so take two. Okay, this goes on here first. Like that, with two screws here and here. Okay, now this guy. So we got the top assembled. Now we'll just include this bit and we'll make sure we get that little cap in there. Okay, next is the filter. Be right back. So here is the uh, filter. Uh, this was just uh, caked in dust, so I've just gone out and blown that out as well. So it just slips on over this piece. And then finally we get this ring that goes over the whole business like so, holding that filter in place. Now that's how this thing comes out of the factory. You can optionally purchase um, plat or paper filters that go over this, which I had done and they clog up from time to time. And I came across a post somewhere where they, someone suggested using a pool filter bag. And uh, this is one that just got a little bit of dust from the top of the counter whoops but these can fit right over 
and provide another level of filtering. You've seen me use uh, one of these, if you watch the uh, uh, dust filter or dust collection system videos. Here, I'll put a link about here. Where I talk about uh, in the dust collector using one of these little filter socks on the uh, final filter for filtering the fine particles, using this as a diffuser. And I'll put this ring over the whole business. And we're good to go. That is a now much cleaner shot back than we ever had before. Let me put it all together and we'll see how it works. So I cleaned out the pail as well. So that's, I don't think it's ever looked as good as it has since it left the factory floor. on, cleaned out the hose a little bit, made that a little nicer. We'll plug it in and we'll just pick up a little bit of the dust that's down here at the bottom of the table saw. I'm not getting dust spewing out of here, so it's nice and clean. It lives to serve another day. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Like and subscribe.